Hello everybody and welcome once again to Feed the Beast Ocean Block. Today we are going to carry on with the mechanism and set up the fizzle fuel process. So let's get started. So let's look at the recipe first of all. This is the recipe for fizzle fuel. We've probably been through this last time and what we, we can't make these reprocess for fizzle fragments because that's a by-process. So we have to make it with the isotropic centrifuge. So let's have a look at the uses of the isotropic centrifuge, if I click it. So it needs uranium hexafluoride, uh, will produce fissile fuel. So let's go back and have a look at, there's a chemical oxidizer recipe, oh yeah, that was, we've looked at that one already. So the Euro, uranium hexafluoride, it's a great word that, I love it. Um, the recipe for this is mixing uranium oxide and hydrofluoric acid, hydrofluoric acid, is made with sulfuric acid plus fluorite. Fairly straightforward. We've got plenty of um, uh, sulfuric acid being produced. In fact, what I've done between episodes is I've also upgraded all the machines so that they've got it's all maxed out with speed, energy, and muffling, and some with gas upgrades. So, right, so uranium oxide is made by uranium yellow cake. Yellow cake uranium, sorry. The recipe for the yellow cake uranium is simply enrichment chamber from a uh, uranium ingot the uranium ingots we're going to do it this way through the through the flowers so let's go somewhere like that let's have a look at that first of all so this is how the processes go so here we put in uranium ingots in the enrichment chamber and then that goes into the chemical oxidizer to produce uranium oxide behind that we have the um, hydrofluoric acid will produce uranium hexafluoride with uranium oxide and on the other side here, I think that, that's right. Yes, so we've got our hydrofluoric acid is coming in here from sulfuric acid plus uh, fluoride. So let's break up this machine first of all. We'll put this one down as a as a process over here. It's a bit of bit of jumping around. I reckon that probably the best place is to put it opposite this one. Uh, if I can, that is yes. I want to put it on this on these energy pipes down here. So let's put that machine, it'll have gone into the backpack, of course. I haven't shown you how to, to do that, have I? If, I? if you press shift, right click, it'll open up this auto pickup window for the bag. So you've got the bag here, you've got MV Tic Tac, so you can have a white list of items in here, uh, which is turned off, so it's just blacklisting, so everything can go into the bag. So I'm not using it for anything special. So let's just put this machine down here. I need to put it on the cable. Try again. No, I can press it right click it, can't I? Just click it onto there. And then you see the oxygen's going into here. Now that doesn't go in because it's not something we need to go into it. So we can simply disconnect this as we did last time. Oops, I was probably in wrench mode. <laughs> right, let's put that back down again. Of course, it's in the bag. Let's move this PowerPoint out of the way. This is just basic pressurized tubing. Basic restaurant prize tubing is not too bad to use. So let's go and check this. I should have checked it first of all, to be honest with you. So let's select that to gases. And then you can see which phase gases are going out of. So right click this three times and it disconnects. So so this time it should get in here quite happily. If you look at the front face here, we've got gases. So it's red, so that's an input. So that's ready configured for this. So have a look. So sodium fluoride. So our sulfuric acid is full. So that's great. The next thing we need to put into here is I might have to do some work on these pipes here because they're probably going to get into the way of this because I can't see a way through here unless we do it underground. So I'll tell you what, I'll be back in a second when I've, re when I've reconnected these oxygen pipes so they go below ground. So... It's going right underground all the way through here. It's actually one block below there, so that's just a, a lying on top of the water, which is great. Oh, what's that one? A basic pressurized tube. I didn't actually pick this one. I changed the this to wrench mode so you can shift right click uh, pipes without having to break them better because you don't then use the. Uh, I'm not using the um, the staff of power, which would, could possibly break far too much. So what we need to do next is to feed this with. Um, ex Fluorite. So fluorite I have set up here like this. There'll probably be plenty in here, as you can see. So let's just take out the the two things we need, the recipe and this. And maybe I'll take some of this fluorite out with me at the same time. 
it's the same process as we did last time. So what we'll put into here, we need a pipe and then we need the chest. So what I'm going to do is put the, actually I don't need the pipe, I just need, I need the, um, the crafter, <laughs> the formularic assembly kit or whatever it's called. So, and we put this into here, then that's the recipe. So we can simply shift click these into here like that. Set it to auto mode and set the aside so it outputs at the back, which is what we want it to do. It's already prepared as it happens. And just click this in here. Obviously, this needs power, so I'm going to have to give it some power. So I'll just go down one block. Maybe I can reach out from the other side, actually, if I do it this way. When I do that, you should be able to see the oxygen pipe going underneath there. Good. So we need for that some advanced ultimate pressure pipe. Where is the advanced? Ah, here we are. Universal cable. And just connect that into here. And that should now have power, which it has done. So this is producing fluorite. In fact, it produces quite a few fluorite per, per item. And then we can simply feed this in. And maybe I'll put the chest down here. Um... It's going to do that because it's probably it's also coming up to night time. It doesn't matter very much. I, I've after removed one of my um, uh, trinkets so that they, so they don't um, burn up. Uh, I'm talking about the phantoms or any any mob for that matter. So in here we've got the items we need. Let's get it out of here. Of course we've got all this fluorite stuff, but we would like to have a hopper botany pot and a chest. Only want one hopper botany pot. Let's just put one in. We also need a seed, and we also need um, some insanium farmland. So let's put this one down here. Put on top of the botany pot. I'm just pressing shift when I do that, by the way. And then I've got an insanium farmland. Put that in top of it, and then let's put into that the seed. Like that. So that's going to grow up as fast as it can in a passive way. You may have noticed, let's go over here, that I replaced this one, which was also for a power pot for, I'm not using the power pot for anything else. So I just made some more and you'll see this is filling up really quickly. I'll have to find something to do with it, the, the seeds and whatever, but you'll see this is also full. So not much is going to go through here now. Uh, it's going to release bits as they come along here. And in here, it's at this, this machine's maxed out, but it's actually not really fast enough, the chemical injection chamber, because this isn't continuously being processed. Where's he gone to? Ha. Huh. Probably easier to wait till he turns around and get in. Like that. I think there was only one. Right. It's not, I'll tell you what, I'll come back when it's not raining. See you in a second. So, it's a lot more peaceful now, so let's come and carry on with this. So all I need to do now is put a logistics pipe feeding out into here. So let's just get one of those out. Basic mechanical pipe is just fine. Let's take it out of there. Put it shifting in that way. And it just has to be in push mode. This obviously needs to be set up so it's got input at the front. That's on the right. Yep, that's fine. Oh my God, I've got a pipe, wrong one. I need logistical transport. So I think I've got that in, still in mode, yes, good. The only thing that I find difficult about mechanism is, there we go, is that they look very similar when you're looking at them with numbers on top. So there we have this one, then we just simply then change the mode of this to items. That's the easiest way of doing it as it happens. Then we can shift right click this. And you'll see that this, these fluorites are going into here, uh, the, the ones that have been produced, and we've got a whole load more, so let's get that out of the backpack. Oops, too much stuff. What did I pick up? I didn't want to pick up then. Don't know. Maybe the seeds. So let's put this into here, and then it can process through quite happily. So we're getting producing now hydrohexafluoride, and that should coming out. Is that coming out in the back here? Yes, it is. So we've this is maxed out now. So we've got sulfuric acid and we've got hydrofluor hydrofluoric <coughs> acid coming out of here. So the next thing, let's go back to these machines, is this side here. So that's going to come in here 
And what do we need to do on the other side here? Enrichment chamber. So we need to get these uranium ingots coming into that. Yep. And the yellow cake uranium. And so we'll put this machine down the chemical infuser next. So let's just change. Actually, I'll break it with the stuff of power. I'm just thinking whether I should break all three of these machines. Oh, yeah, let's do that. A bit too ham fisted for this thing, but there we are. That's <laughs> not a big deal. <laughs> Wrench is sometimes better for doing that stuff. I think it keeps the settings better as well. Okay, never mind. So we also have uh, one of these flowers producing uranium. This one here is producing uranium essence. And this here will should turn this into a... It's got an ink radi uh, uranium essence. Well, eight of those is the recipe. And it doesn't tell you what it produces, but it's producing ingots. So we'll need these two bits as well. So let's just do that. Hopefully I've got space for all of this stuff. Oh, it's gone to the backpack, good. So we've got the bits and pieces we need to carry on with this now. So let's come along here. I'm just thinking a second. It would probably be a good idea if I put this on this side. Yes, I think so. I need to break one more block down here and put down another um, pipe because this is where the uh, energy or cable, because this is where the um, isotropic, Centrifuge was going to be. So let's go along here. Put this on here. Miss, try again. <laughs> oh, changes to changes to wrench mode again. Just only one away. I'm not working on this one. That's strange. Okay, do it the hard way then, or the risky way. So next thing is along here is we need the next machine. I can't remember which one it is, but it should be the first one in the backpack. So let's look at the backpack. Chemical infuser, chemical oxidizer, isotropic uh, enrichment chamber, isotropic centrifuge. Those are the things we need in here. We also need the formula, formularic, <laughs> formularic assemblicator. Well, still a mouthful, sorry. Okay, these will do. So, so the, the output of these is created by the chemical infuser. I wonder if we can see what's in it before I actually put it down. Shift on it. Yes, you can, in fact. Energy stored, of course, because I've got it in my hotbar. And it tells me what upgrades I've got in, but it doesn't tell me anything else. Okay. So let's put this down here. And have a look inside it. The hydrogen, yes, hydrogen fluoride, uh, hydrofluoric acid is coming in one side. I need to swap these sides over. So <clears throat> it's gases, isn't it? So it is coming on on the right hand side. So this machine is not set up for auto ejecting. Let's just make sure auto ejecting is on. Because that's actually a default setting as well, auto ejecting. So this one, or maybe it's not set to the right side. Let's just check that it's set to the right side. Yes, it isn't. Left hand side is nothing, I don't think. So shift click it off like that. Still doesn't come out. Oh, that was probably items again. That's always I always make the same mistake. Let's go to gases. Yes. Change that off and put this one on. And that should now come through here. Let's have a look. So now it's full. Good. Fantastic. So the next thing we need in here is the yellow cake. Uh it's the oxide. Uranium oxide. So that will be then made in the oxidizer, chemical oxidizer. Good. And we put this down here. So again, it is going from, that's perfect. You see left to right. I think I set this up when I was doing it the other way. So it made things a little bit more difficult. That's the wrong one. That's gases we need. The gases is on the right hand side. Auto eject on. That's now empty. And this is, has probably increased. I'm not 100% sure. But let's get to the next machine which has got no power, so I have to run some power down the bottom into these as well, of course. That's already in my hotbar, that's cool. I think that's all we need. Two more pieces, I'm not sure, let's find out. Anyway, it's full of power, so that's fine, and it needs some yellow cake. Uranium, so yellow cake uranium comes from the enrichment chamber, which is here. In fact, actually, that was the last, the last particular machine. So that's taking uranium ingots and yellow cake uranium that's coming out. Again, this is an item, so 
it'll be the right side. So we can auto eject off, on, and we change the side because obviously got this the wrong way around. And it's still not gone out. Probably because this machine is set up for items. It's not on the left. Let's just make it on the left. What I did then is to, yes, there you see it's going through nicely. And this is probably coming in some uranium oxide. Fantastic. So this is now full of uranium oxide, which is great. So the only thing we need to do now is to do the same as we've done here. So we need the formulary ap um, applicator. Oops, I've dug down too many pieces there, didn't I? And um, we'll have to put one of those back. The advantage of the wrench. Let's put that back away and let's put the power. We need the power for the for that machine and that machine is here. So we can put it down straight away. With a bit of luck, items are going to go out of the back, but we need to auto eject those. I've got those out on the right hand side. I want to go out of the back and auto eject. Nothing in there yet. And this does have a recipe. Craft oh, it has a recipe already in it. Oh, that's a blank recipe. Let's put one in that's encoded, as you can see, and that's nice. So now we need to, again, we need the logistic transporter. Let's put that on the front. We could put it on the side here. We're going to put it on the front. And then we're going to put another chest down beside that. Let's move this out of the way. One chest. One hop hopper. It depends how much we need. We could move these up here. Um, one seed, uranium seeds. I guess I've got some uranium seeds here. And then we've got some essence. No, I need to do that second, don't I? Because I need the farmland, first of all. So let's put this down. Let's put on top of this the botany bot. Didn't do that right, did I? Where did the botany pot go to? Put it in the chest. I did. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Farmland inside that now. Seed. And then we just need to set this up for items. I think it's still on. No, probably not on items. Let's have a look. Oh, it was on rotate mode. Okay. So the items are going to get pushed out of here now. Let's put some items into it. Actually, I'm looking at this, my inventory is a bit of a mess. As you can see, they're going out of here and coming into here. Uh, this will also need to have some sides configured. So output is on the top. In fact, we want output on the back. Let's just input output on the back and auto eject on. Yes, that's right. And then set this to auto mode on so it actually makes the uranium ingots which we can see it's making and they should now be coming into here fantastic those are getting processed into uranium oxide which is great as fast as they can in fact i should have speed upgrades and they should also be maxed out so if i press shift on this machine can we see it no we can't i think it has to be in your hot bulb I'll tell you exactly which ones we've got in here. This machine hasn't got any upgrades in. But I don't think we need upgrades in here because it seems to be fast enough. In fact, if I need to put an upgrade in, I'd replace this pipe here and that would get, make this go faster. As you can see, it's, it's going to fill this up much quicker than we're going to use it. That's right. So the last machine now is the output machine. Is this one. Oh, and this one's very straightforward. It doesn't do much. It just basically puts stuff out. So here's fissile fuel. So we need, on the back side, it needs to be an input. And I've set it, oh, it's not, uh, sorry, it's gases. Uh, that should be okay. Put to eject on, front and right, right and out. Let's just turn those out because we only want the front to be the output side. So it needs from here. This wants to automatically output it to the front. It's not auto eject yet, so that's not working. Let's just check this is now working. Still doesn't have any in. Why not? Gases. Oh, because it needs to be the back side that's the input. So 
the gases. Sorry, that is, sorry, that was input output. Backside should be input, yes. And it's still not coming in, why not? I have got the right materials in here, haven't I? Uranium hexafluoride. Fissil fuel in the isotropic centrifuge, yes. If I don't figure this out in a second, I'm going to come back in. Automatic ejecting is output on the front. Um, oh, that gas is that gas is, sorry, I've got to get gases. Output on the front, yes, and you've got the orange and the red going on those two sides. Oh, it's not auto ejecting off, that's the problem. So that's now full of uranium hexafluoride, and it's straight away full with fissile fuel. So there we are. We have that now. The fissile fuel is probably going to go in. I'm going to move these machines around a bit. I think I'm going to put it straight into into the fission reactor. Uh, you may notice I have, did test this quite a bit. And in here, I have got some nuclear waste. Now think about the waste buckets. Press shift on it. I've got 1,221 uh spent nuclear waste and that disappears one millibucket per minute so it's going down but it's going down very slowly and you have to be very careful with these that's why i've got a hazmat suit on if you haven't noticed when i was playing i did get um caught out once in fact twice as it happens uh because i was moving these things didn't expect it to actually do anything i thought they were a tank but you can't move them you can transport the the waste somewhere else but you can't move them I'm not sure if you can take the pipes off either. I've got a feeling you can't. So anyway, we'll cover that next ep uh, next episode, book one, I think. So that's it for this episode. I do hope you've enjoyed it. But until next time, I wish you all the best. Bye for now.